Welcome to our podcast, which is part of the Global Change Management Compendium 2022. In this compendium, we will explore different thoughts and frameworks which can guide sustainable development towards a future inside of our planetary boundaries. Of crucial importance are the ideas of planetary health and the donut economy, operating as the overarching concepts behind our research. Now, let's dive into our next topic to find out how we can actively shape a future worth pursuing and living for. My name is Caro and in this episode I will take you on a journey to housing cooperatives in Munich. I live in a cooperative flat and worked three years for a project of a housing cooperative. In this podcast we find out how affordable housing in big cities is still possible, how resources are shared in housing projects and what this all has to do with the donut economy and planetary boundaries. Transformational change is needed for a sustainable and just way of living for everybody. We can see that human development has led to an overexploitation of finite resources. One part in which we privately consume many resources revolves around our housing. Let's look at some numbers in Germany. The settlement and transport area in Germany grew by an average of around 52 hectares per day over the four-year period from 2016 to 2019. The German government's goal is to limit the average daily increase to less than 30 hectares by 2030. By 2050, the aim is to even achieve a circular land economy. This means that no further netland should then be taken up for settlement and transport purposes. Due to the strong growth of settlement and traffic areas, nature suffers and a species-rich habitat is buried. Just one example. Over 70% of the more than 2,000 plant species studied have declined by an average of 15% across Germany. The intensification of agriculture probably plays a role here, as does the growing consumption of land. We do know that there is a space problem in many big cities. The demand for housing has risen massively in many big cities, and so have prices. With this we see problems on both sides, on the side of nature, but also on the side of the people. And in the donut economy we are looking for the sweet spot in between, a safe space where ideally people and nature can thrive together. So the question is, what are the possible solutions? Housing cooperatives can offer a solution. To put it briefly, they provide sustainable housing, rely on existing buildings, keep rents low, focus on participation and have often great energy concepts. Let's take a look at Germany, where housing cooperatives have been providing affordable housing since the 19th century. They enable their members to live in healthy, well-equipped flats, often with a focus on sustainability. Co-determination and solidarity have remained important principles to this day. Hmm, I have never heard of housing cooperatives. Well, let's see where they come from. Often these housing cooperatives emerged from self-help groups in which people looking for housing got together to build their own flats. The cooperative successfully rely on the basic principles of self-help, self-administration and self-responsibility. At the same time, the business objectives are not geared towards profit maximization. There are approximately 2,000 housing cooperatives in Germany and they have about 2.2 million flats. This model of shared ownership makes housing affordable and puts the interests of the residents at the center. Well, affordable housing sounds great, but what's the catch? You become a member and then have access to the housing pool. In Munich, however, it can take several years to get a flat through the cooperative, since there are many applicants and many factors are taken into account when allocating flats. In addition, a certain number of interest-bearing cooperative shares are purchased upon moving in, based on the size of the living space. And those who live in a cooperative are much more than tenants. Some cooperatives also expect active help in the sense of self-management. This form of living addresses several spheres of the social foundation of the donut economy. Housing, of course, but also the sphere of social equity. The cooperatives are democratically organized and the members have extensive rights of participation. The criteria for the allocation of apartments include, for example, appropriate use of space, 
how much you are rooted in the neighborhood or the composition of the house community, since the aim is to have a colorful diversity of people. Which also brings us to the sphere of gender equality. There is equal access to resources and opportunities regardless of gender. It also covers the sphere of energy. In Munich, there is even the energy cooperative Isawatt EG, which provides environmentally friendly energy and mobility solutions for these housing cooperatives. Among other things, they offer tenant electricity with technologies such as photovoltaic systems and also combined heat and power plants. And the interesting aspect is that this on-site produced electricity is delivered directly to the apartment without using the public power grid. This is highly ecological and also reduces grid charges and other levies. Isawatege also offers ecological sharing and mobility concepts. With shared mobility, where for example electric cars, cargo bikes and public transport tickets are shared among residents. In this way, costs and resources are conserved. In consequence, it also touches the sphere of air pollution and the ecological sealing of the planetary boundaries as it contributes against the ever-increasing individual traffic which causes bad air on the streets. Pollution in general is one of the main challenges in the UN Sustainable Development Goal number 11, which is about sustainable cities and communities. A new project from the Isawatt EG is the neighborhood platform Klink, which makes cooperation and neighborhood-wide collaboration possible. Many Munich housing cooperatives are involved. It's an app that makes it easy to manage and book shared resources such as rooms, accommodations, co-working spaces, objects and mobility offers. The sphere of work and income and peace and justice in the social foundation of the donut economy are also touched here. There are cheaper flats for people with a lower income and some housing cooperatives also provide working spaces within the building for a better work-life balance. In many flats from housing cooperatives, it is possible to live there your whole life and also the rent is usually adjusted upwards infrequently and only minimally. If problems arise, there are often contact persons or it can be clarified directly in the plenum, depending on how the residential group manages itself. All these examples show that the spot in between the donut can be hit, a safe space where people and nature can thrive together. Well, we heard some great aspects for the people, but I don't really see the benefit for nature yet. Absolutely. What does sustainable housing mean anyway, and what's in for nature? Looking at the planetary boundaries, climate change is one of the three most important factors for our future in the concept of planetary boundaries. In the housing sector, greenhouse gases are produced primarily during the construction and use of buildings. All buildings in the world together currently cause more than one-fifth of global greenhouse gas emissions. Climate protection measures in the building sector address the two major sources of emissions. First, energy production and consumption, and second, the used building materials. The UN Environment Programme estimates in their Global Status Report for Buildings and Construction from 2020 that the most important task in this field for industrialized countries is to counteract the increase in per capita living space and to renovate the existing building stock. So therefore it helps to have housing models that reduce land consumption and in general the avoidance of new buildings. This touches several spheres of the ecological ceiling of the planetary boundaries the sphere of land conversion, chemical pollution and freshwater withdrawals. I would like to give a few examples from and around Munich that address a few of the mentioned issues. There's a housing project in the east of Munich called Rio Riem. It is a joint venture of the three Munich housing cooperatives Wagner's Art, Wogeno and Cooperative Großstadt, short Kogo. A total of 175 apartments were built there using solid wood construction, making them more ecological and sustainable than average new buildings. There are individual apartments and communal spaces, as well as intergenerational living and inclusionary services. There they have some small apartments with the alternative housing model of cluster housing, which aims, among other things, to reduce the space required in the apartment per person. A flexible housing model in which the resident has her rather small private room with bathroom but shares the living room and the kitchen with others, for example. 
In addition to using less space, it is also important to conserve other resources. For example, many housing cooperatives give preference to existing buildings. This is the case, for example, with the Kuhhaus Kloster Schledorf project by Wogino EG. Here, cluster living takes place in a former monastery building. I lived and worked there myself for three years and moved from the city of Munich to the countryside. I really think that it was great that the building was given a new use. With several users under one roof, living and working is possible in one place. This keeps the commute to work short. In addition, a lot of things were shared. From the electric car to the drill, there was a common pool of things. This also saves resources. And I also really benefited from the better air, nature and community around me. Especially at Corona times, this was a big help. There was even next door an eco-social agriculture where vegetables were grown ecologically on a small area with the market gardening method. This project is a great example that works on several levels and brings nature and people in the sense of the donut economy in balance so that both sides can benefit from it. Well, sounds great. And are housing cooperatives only a thing in Germany? No, not at all. Housing cooperatives exist on all continents in many different formats. Just look out for them. Thank you for listening to this episode. This podcast is part of a bigger contribution from our master's program. We would like to invite you to listen to the other episodes and have a look at our website to read upon more topics. Further information can be found in the show notes.